Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about something a little different, but super important if you're trying to write clean and scalable code. Today we are talking about code smells and things to avoid when writing code. So if you are more of a beginner and you are doing some of these things, I'd recommend you do yourself a favor and fix it. But before we get into it, if you guys do enjoy or learn something from this video, please leave a like and subscribe, but let's get into the first thing. Okay, so the first thing I want to go over is using task.weight instead of weight. Now, why should we be using task.weight over weight in our script? So here we have the regular weights and then we have task.weight. Well, first of all, regular weight is deprecated, meaning that Roblox does not want us to use this anymore. And it is deprecated because task.weight fits better with the Roblox task scheduler and also task.weight is more accurate. And we can test this by getting a new variable called total, and that will be equal to zero. And then we're going to make a for loop for i equals one comma 10 do. So this will run 10 times and we're gonna get a t variable, which will be equal to time. And then we're going to use it regular weight for one second and say total is equal to total plus time minus t and then we can do the same exact thing down here well first we should probably print our results so print weight average so we're going to get the average time for weight and this will be total divided by 10 and then down here we're going to set total back to zero and just replace this with task.weight and put the average print back down here so task dot wait just like that so if we go ahead and play the game look at our output and let this code run you will see that we get the average for weight which is 0 0.96 and then eventually task dot weights which will give us an average of 1.0037 and remember, we put in one second for both of these. So which one is more accurate? Well, you guys can obviously task that way is more accurate because weight uh, gave us over those 10 times over the loop gave us 0 0.96. And so if we were to find how much more precise task weight is more than weight, we are going to find the error between both of these functions. So that would mean taking one minus 0 0.96, this whole number here, and also taking one minus this number. And so with those two numbers, we divide them by each other. And so that gives us the result that in this certain test, in this play test right now that I just got, that means task weight is eight and a half times more precise than weight. So this shows why the modern task schedule is so much more consistent for timing code and just overall better. So another thing that could be a code smell in your guys' Roblox game is doing heavy work in run service events or using run service events even though you don't have to. So as we all know, run service events run every frame. So run service .pre -render, this event fires every frame before the frame is rendered. Pre-animation fires every frame, but it's prior to the physics simulation. And so you guys get the point, all of these events run in certain points in the frame, but they do run every frame. So having expensive code running every frame is obviously going to bog down your performance and may lead to frame stutters. So some examples of code you shouldn't be running every frame is stuff like ray casting. And also if you have a big folder in your workspace with a whole bunch of parts, hundreds of thousands of parts. And so if you were to get that every frame, so for example, workspace, uh, find, we're gonna say, find first child parts and you were to get all the children in that folder every frame if you have a lot of parts in that folder then that is very bad and it leads to performance drops because of the amount of parts are being returned every frame and i could also go on and on about creating and destroying parts every frame and running through tables to find information every frame but you guys get the point this is just a no-go 
and also to branch off of that running code that you don't have to run in a run service. So for example, when I was first starting out making a game, I always wanted to use a run service to display stats on a screen. So for example, I have this text label here that would display the amount of money a player has. And so basically in here is I would have the label. So we're just gonna get that. And so every frame, I would update the label's text to be the player's money amount. So for example, player.leaderstats.cash.value. First of all, this is already bad because we are getting the player's cash amount on the client, which if you've watched any of my other videos, you do not want to trust the client with anything. You should have where you have your stat script on the server whenever that value changes in an event. So you detect when the value changes, then you should fire an event to the client to then update the text label. And so that is my main point is updating the text label even though we, do, we don't want to or the value hasn't changed. So always use event based logic when possible because it just makes more sense and it's easier to maintain. So the next thing I want to go over is cleaning up your event connections when you no longer need them. And if you don't clean up your event connections, then that can lead to memory leaks, which I can make another video on if you guys want that. But for this example, let's say when the player is added to the game, and then we are also going to check player.character added. So when the character is added to the game, we are going to say humanoid character wait for child humanoid and then say humanoid dot died connect let me type check this real quick as a humanoid just like this and then print died so if you guys can't tell what's going on here when the player joins the game and then we are checking when the character is added into the game we are making a new died connection for the humanoid and by the way the old connection if there was people in this game before you that connection is never cleaned up either so after respawns if your humanoid has died quite a few times and over and over again then you have multiple of these connections per player so when it does fire again all of those connections fire that have been stacked up not just the latest one so eventually this leads to stacking memory usage if the player responds too many times so how do we fix this well we would have a variable called i'm just going to call it death connection that would be equal to nil and then down here we're going to say if death connection then death connection disconnect and then death connection is equal to nil and then we are also going to say death connection is equal to this event so here is another example of a memory leak and why it is a memory leak is because we are connecting a new function every time so Using the click detector, when our mouse hovers over a certain part, then we make a, a this is still a memory leak as well, user input service dot input began, but it, it is much smaller, but we are listening for an input, which is, looks like it is the key code E. And so every time basically there's input, then we are making a new connection like you can see here. And also holding, as I can see here, will never be set to false, which turns this entire script into a while loop or a, from a while loop to an infinite loop. So there's a couple ways you could go about cleaning this up, but here I'm going to show you guys one of the ways we can do that.
Okay guys, so here is the revised script. We have two new connection variables, a cleanup function here. And so basically when we have our mouse over the click detector, then we're gonna check first if there's an input connection. If there is, we're gonna disconnect it and then set the input connection down here. And also one thing I forgot to do is put game processed event here for both of the connection so you would just say if game processed event then return end but moving on we no longer have the while loop we are checking if there's a render connection and discon disconnecting it if there is and then also we are setting it down here and if holding is equal to false then we're disconnecting the connection and then down here, I also added when the mouse leaves the click detector, we clean up everything in that function. And then also when we are no longer pressing the E key, once again, you would have game processed event here. Then we are setting holding to false and then cleaning it up as well. So the last thing I want to go over for this video is remote event spamming and using up the network bandwidth. So for this example, I have a gun in my inventory in this game and obviously it works just like a normal gun. And every time we click, it shoots a bullet. And so that means we are also firing the shoot remote event every time we click. Now this script already isn't the most optimized because on the server we are tweening the parts so you know tweening on the server is never good but apart from that we are firing a lot of remote events so for example if I were to click really fast like this that is a lot of remote events being fired for all of these bullets. And so also with that we are sending the mouse hit position and so that can also consume some network bandwidth so what are some ways we can help this there are more complex ways that fps games could solve this issue but one that you could easily do is replace your remote events with unreliable remote events and so as it says in the name this remote event is unreliable which means it always isn't going to make it across every time so it's just a type of communication that prioritizes the speed at which it sends over guaranteed delivery so using this makes them useful for sending high frequency data that doesn't have to be received every single frame so if we are shooting a lot of bullets then we can afford to not send one or two like that and another thing i should add as well unreliable remote events do not have the same amount of overhead as regular remote events do so basically all you would have to do to replace it is by making an unreliable remote event calling it the same thing as your other remote event and there you go head back into the game everything works fine it's just a little bit more optimized and sometimes the parts aren't going to make it but that is okay if we are having a whole bunch of parts like this And so another way you could also fix this is just by having a fire rate variable. So we can say, oh, my auto clicker is still going. So we're going to say fire rate is equal to 0 0.3. And we're also going to have a table called last shot. So this is a table. And then in here, we're going to say local now is equal to time. And then if last shot player and now minus last shot player is less than the fire rate then we're going to return and then down here say last shot player is equal to now oh whoops player is equal to now so basically all this is saying is if we have a player in the last shot table and also the timestamp for now minus the last time we took uh, or fired the gun is smaller than the fire rate then that means we are clicking too fast and then we should stop the script and we do that by saying return and so if we get past this if statement then we say 
the player's last shot is equal to now or time. So then if you go into your game and start clicking, as you can see, I am spamming it, but it only sends every 0.3 seconds or the fire rate we had right here. And so yeah guys, this was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video, or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.